Hello to everyone. This time we are looking at the Lapointe array which should be able to generate a permanent movement as an overunity device. We look at the ring made of Lapointe arrays as a perpetual motion machine which will hardly be implemented due to its costs. Then we look at a reduced version that is considerably cheaper with the same function. In order to check whether a Lapointe array can really work, we examine the functional principle and its possible variants. Be sure, it will be exciting to see what result we come up with. What is a Lapointe array? It is an invention designed by David Lapointe with a bowl-shaped array of magnets to concentrate a magnetic field to one side and thin it out on the other. This creates an imbalance that should be able to add more energy to a magnet that is inserted than was required to push it in. This brings me to my idea of shortening the perpetual motion machine considerably without affecting the effect. Only two Lapointe arrays are needed to achieve the same effect. The magnet exceeding the Lapointe array slides into a slightly tilted transmission tube. The transmission tube is inclined just so much that a bit of kinetic energy of the magnet is transferred to it and this transmission tube rotates in a half circle to the opposite side. On the opposite side, the transmission tube hits the entrance to the second Lapointe array, causing the magnet to slip out. On this side, the transmission tube is not inclined and therefore offers no resistance. After the magnet has left the transmission tube, the transmission tube returns to its original state, as example by a spring. As you can see, the system is symmetrical and allows permanent rotation of the magnet. If we divert a part of the energy of the magnet, which it additionally receives, our world energy problem would be solved. Of course, it could also be that the Lapointe array does not generate any additional energy. Let's find out if we can make the invisible magnetic field visible to see what's happening in secret. In my videos, I usually make the invisible magnetic field visible by representing it as a deepening and using a marble ball that gravity rolls into the hollow. You can skip this section if you already know. I represent magnetic attraction as deepening and magnetic repulsion as hill. The stronger the magnetic force, the greater the impact. If the magnetic field is actively influenced by external forces, for example a magnetic ball is pushed out of the field, then this also influences the marble ball. It rises. If several magnets complement each other, then the hollow becomes deeper, as can be seen in the example with the magnetic ramp. We now transfer the gravity model to the Lapointe array. There are three possible variations here. First, we move an iron object into the Lapointe array. There is no magnetic repulsion, only magnetic attraction. Only a deep hollow. Second, we take a magnet that is first attracted when inserted into the Lapointe array and then repelled when the pole boundary is crossed. Third, the magnet is first repelled when inserted into the Lapointe array and then attracted when crossing the pole boundary. Now 
which of the three variations is suitable for adding energy to the system so that the magnet can perform perpetual motion. We can see that better in a 3D representation. If only attraction is taken into account, then it is clear that the blue ball gains as much energy rolling down the slope as it has to expand to get back out of the slope. This would be the case if not a magnet but a piece of iron were used to traverse the Lapointe array. The blue ball will get stuck in the depression due to the friction losses. In the second example, magnetic attraction is thinned out and repulsion is concentrated. A lot of energy has to be expended to get the green ball over the polar border. This energy is released again when the ball rolls down the hill. Here the general friction will prevent the ball from having more energy at the exit than at the entrance as usual. In the third example, we reverse the polarity so that the rarefied magnetic repulsion must be overcome first and then the concentrated magnetic attraction will be traversed. Here too, the rise to the top and the fall to the lowest point are always symmetrical and therefore no energy gain is to be expected. So you can see for all variations that the energy cost to traverse the Lapointe array is symmetric. It takes just as much energy to overcome repulsion as it does to overcome attraction to get out of the system. Likewise, vice versa. Friction usually prevents release from the system unless attraction is significant and the magnet remains trapped. Both the long and the shortened version of the Lapointe array ring are nice mind games, but nothing more. Just the energy to bring the magnet into the system ensures that the magnet will pass a few Lapointe arrays before it will then come to a standstill. I hope I was able to bring some clarity to the magical world of perpetual motion machines with this video. Thank you for watching the video. Subscribe to my channel if you dare. See you and have fun.